fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver. Tonto rode into Gopher Bend, leading a white horse with a black star on its forehead. It was Victor, the horse that belonged to the Lone Ranger's 14-year-old nephew, Dan Reed. Oh, scout. Oh, fella. Oh, Victor. The Indian dismounted in front of the sheriff's office. As he tossed the reins about a hitch rail, he heard the voice of Sheriff Bates. Hi there, Sweezy. How? What can I do for you? Well, me Tonto. Me come wait for stagecoach. The stage from Marshall City? That's right. You expecting someone on it? Ah. Uh. That's what I figured when I saw an extra horse. Gee, that's mighty fine horse flesh. Ah. Uh. How soon stagecoach get here? Oh, she'll be along in about an hour. You can sit there on the porch if you want to. Eh? Oh, that's good. Sheriff, Sheriff Bates. Well, hi there, Ben. And how are you, kid? Sheriff, we're so worried we don't know what to do. Yep, I reckon you are. But... Worrying won't help you folks any. Yeah. Sheriff, you haven't had any word from Marshall City, have you? Not a thing, Ben. But I reckon we'll know everything when the stage gets in. Come on, we sit down on the porch and wait. I don't know what we'll do if we have to move. Well, after all, kid, you don't know that you'll have to move. Now, why not just postpone thinking about it until the man comes from the city? Sit down there. That's a comfortable chair. Thanks. Here, Ben, you take this chair. I don't see how there could have been a mistake in the survey of our land. Me and Kate have had that little ranch for 15 years. Yes, I know you have, Ben. If John Rudd had any idea we were on his land, why, why he should have said something a long time ago. He didn't want the land till we found there was coal on it. Well, coal makes that land mighty valuable, Kate. The new railroad through Marshall City will pay handsome for it. Of course they will. That's why Rudd's after it. Then there's one thing you can be sure of. What's that? The surveyors who came here and looked the situation over are honest men. You needn't be afraid that Rudd has bribed them. They didn't tell you what they learned, did they? No. They took their measurements and went back to Marshall City. An engineer will bring the report from there. Uh, I suppose if it turns out that John Rudd owns the land, we'll have to get off. That's about the size of a kid. If we don't do it willingly, Sheriff, then what? Kate is Sheriff. I'd have to put you off. I, 
I'd have to use force if necessary. That's the law. Law, indeed. Where's the law that says a man is rich and grasping as John Rudd can take our land away from us? Kate, sometimes the law and justice are two different things. I wish that stage had come. It'll be along pretty soon. The Indian there is waiting for it, too. Is that so? You waiting to see the engineer? No. Me wait for young friend. Him named Dan Reed. There were three passengers on the stage from Marshall City. Al Jackson and Dan Reed, the nephew of the Lone Ranger, sat on one seat. Facing them was a hard-faced man who hadn't spoken throughout the entire trip. Dan Reed held a small metallic object in his hand. That's funny. He studied it carefully, then shook it and examined it again. What's the matter, Dan? I I guess his compass isn't right. Compass, hmm? Let me see it. The needle is supposed to point to the north, but something's wrong. (laughs) That's what most people say when they find that the compass doesn't agree with their own sense of direction. Well, take a look at it, Mr. Jackson. When we left Marshall City, we were supposed to be traveling due east to get to Gopher Bend. That's right. Well, I declare. You see what I mean, sir? According to the compass, we're traveling south. First time in my life I've known a compass to be wrong. I say, there was a fork in the trail about two miles back. I recollect we took the southern branch of that fork. But I don't remember any turns. Neither do I. The road must have made one very big and slow turn. It was so gradual we didn't notice it. Now we're going at right angles to the straight route. We are if the compass is right. Compasses are generally a lot more reliable than watches. I'm going to stick my head out the window and ask the driver what this means. Sit still. What's that? I said sit still. So you found your tongue, huh? Well, I'm not sitting still for you. Or... You heard me. Oh, God. That's right. If I have to use it, the driver won't even slow up when he hears the report. You mean to say you'd shoot me for trying to speak to the yeah. driver? You can talk to the driver all you want, but it won't get you nowhere. I can tell you anything that he'll tell you. Yeah. The kid's compass is right. You are going south. But why? What's the idea? You'll find out soon enough. And if you do exactly as you're told... Maybe neither one of you will get hurt. This is pretty high-handed. It's going to get even more high-handed, Mr. Jackson. Just to make sure you don't get hard to handle, you better hand over your gun. My fun, I will. I will. You fool. I'll help. You try to take my gun, huh? Just make a leg stop for that throw. I'll help you. You so big. Look out. No. You. Get back there, kid. Get back there. Yeah, now sit still. All right, Blackie? Sure. I could have handled the two of them without you stopping the stage. No use taking chances. How bad hurts Jackson? I just cracked him with the barrel of my gun. He'll be conscious before we get to the shack. Now take his gun. How about you? You packing a shooting iron? No. I'll make sure. What are you going to take us? We're going to a little shack that's hid away so as no one can ever find it. You mean that's where? Yeah. Man in Jackson's clothes and send him on to go for Ben. Yeah, but Blackie, what about this boy? He's just a passenger. Being such makes him a witness. I reckon he'll just have to take what comes. Now get back on the box and get the horses going. During the remainder of the journey, Dan Reed sat in the corner of the stage, eyes downcast, while Jackson recovered consciousness, but remained silent and motionless before the constant threat of Blackie's gun. The stagecoach made a number of turns and rattled over hard, packed ground before it finally came to a halt in front of a small cabin. Several horses stood at ground hitch nearby. Hold, hold there, hold, 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 steady there, hold. Well, here we are, Jackson. Get out. It looks like Rod is here. That is horse there? Yeah. There he is by the door. Is Jackson with you? We got him, Mr. Rudd. Bring him inside. Slim Calhoun's waiting. Come on, Jackson. You too, Dan. You better do what they say, Dan. You won't help yourself by fighting. <laughs> Take him right inside, Blackie. Calhoun's in there. You got Jackson, man. 
Who's the kid? He was a passenger. Name is Dan. Rudd, what sort of game are you playing? Well, I, I don't like the report you're taking to town. You seem to know that Martin's title is clear. You've got no claim to his land. I knew that when I first sent for the surveyors. Why, you... Now, uh, Slim Calhoun is going to become Al Jackson. He'll wear your clothes, carry your credentials, and go into town in your place. The report showing that you own the Martin land. Rod, you can't get away with it. Oh, yes, I can. I'll go into the next room. You'll find some clothes there. Put them on so Slim can use the outfits you're wearing. You too, Dan. That room's where the two of you will be kept until we decide what to do with you. Dan, I wish there was some way I could get you out of this. Mr. Jackson, they're going to take your clothes here. Yeah. I have an idea. An idea? Leave that door open and don't try sneaking out the window. We've got guards outside. Take off your belt and toss it over this way. Let Slim take my belt instead of yours. I'm sure one of my friends will see it. There's my belt. Now stall, Mr. Jackson. Take as much time as you can. I've got to do something. Hurry up, there. Yeah, hurry up. I'm waiting for those clothes. I've got to get on to town. What's taking you so long, anyhow? Give me that shirt. Yep. Seems to me you're in an awful hurry. I am. Here you are, Slim. Get into this outfit. Right, boss. I'll go on ahead and get Sheriff Bates. He'll be with me to meet the stage. All right. Hey, where's the belt? What are you doing with it? Please, give me that belt. Wait, wait, not that one. Take this one. <laughs> what for, kid? You're not going any place where you will need a fancy silver buckle like this. Now, look here, Rudd. This is as pretty a belt as I've ever seen. I reckon I'll keep this when I get through with the rest of Jackson's clothes. Now, I don't care what you're doing. I'll go on. I'll be in town waiting for you. When the stage came into view, the sheriff hurried from his office, followed by Ben Martin and his wife. John Rudd was waiting in the road. Well, there she comes, Martin. Now we'll know the truth about that land of mine. It's not your land. It never has been your land, and it's not going to be now. Hmm. How about it, Sheriff? Well, there's no use talking about it until we hear what Mr. Jackson's got to say. I do hope that he's on that stage. Well, what's the Indian doing here? He's expecting a passenger from Marshall City. All right. Who are you expecting? Now, me wait for young friends. Ho, 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 steady there. Ho, ho. Hey, are uh, you a new driver? Yeah, I'm substituting. Joe's took sick. Any passengers from Marshall City? Government man from the land office, that's all. Oh, he is here. Steady now, hey, please, uh, steady. Ben, if the verdict goes against you, I don't want no disturbance. Just remember, it's the law. And my job is to enforce the law. Tension mounted as the small group watched the substitute driver open the door of a stagecoach. Slim Calhoun, posing as the government man, stepped out boldly. He eyed the sheriff, then advanced. Before he could speak, Tonto broke in. You only one on stage? Yeah. What about it, Redskin? You not see boy on stage? No. Nope. I've traveled alone from Marshall City. Mister, what's the answer? What'd that survey show? Who owns the land that my house is on? And, uh... Who are you? Name is Martin, Ben Martin. Uh, my name is Rudd. I think you have a report on some disputed property. Oh, uh, yes, yes, sir. My report is for the sheriff. Well, that's me. Here you are, sheriff. This is the official report on the survey just completed. Yes. What's it say? Tell us, sheriff. Tell us. I can't wait any longer. Ben, Kate, according to this, there was a mistake made in the original survey of the property. Mistake, yes, I knew it. Your property starts about a quarter of a mile east of the present boundary. That, that means we lose our house. We lose that coal we found. We lose everything. It's tough. That's all I can say. It's downright tough. And it's not justice, but dead read it, it's the law. You know what's tough? The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Tonto couldn't understand why Dan Reed wasn't on board the stage from Marshall City. Then suddenly the Indian saw a brilliant silver belt buckle worn by the man who called himself Al Jackson. He leaped to the back of his paint horse, grabbed the bridle of the white horse, and set out from Gopher Bend at top speed. Get him up, scout! The Lone Ranger had been camped in a small gully not far from town. He heard the familiar hoof beats and rose to meet his Indian friend and Dan Reed. He was surprised to see that Dan's horse was riderless. Oh, scout, oh, fella, oh, fella. Oh, wasn't Dan on the stage? No. No, him not on board. There plenty of trouble. Well, what kind of trouble? Well, me talk. Well, you get saddled on silver. Right. Say there's something. In as few words as possible, the Indian told about the claim to Martin's land, the arrival of the government agent, and the decision. But, Toto, that decision can't stand. It's not legal. And how that? If Martin's been on that land all these years, he can stay there. They can't make him move. Him move just the same. But that not main thing. Oh, tell me the rest. Well, long time ago, me make fancy belt and give it to Dan. Yes, I remember that belt, said Silver. Dan wears it all the time. Well, him not wear it now. Belt worn by fellow from Marshall City. Al Jackson. That's right. You must be mistaken, Toto. Dan would never part with his belt. You saw one like it. No, me see same belt. Me no. Then we're going to town right away. We'll talk to Jackson. That good. Yes, steady, boy. There. Now we're ready, Silver. Come on, Toto. He's uh, a big uh, fellow. Uh, get him up. Scout. Come on, Silver. There was a meeting in the sheriff's office. John Rudd was smooth and suave as he tried to appear magnanimous. I intend to be generous with you, Martin. Ben Martin and his wife were pale and drawn. They looked as if the bottom had fallen out of their world. Licked. Nothing left after all these years. Why, you have your house. Our house. But, but according to Mr. Jackson, we don't own the land it stands on. Yes, that's true. And it would be an expensive proposition to move that house. So here's how I can help you. I'll pay you handsomely for the house. Let's say uh, $2,000. Well, that's a lot more than it costs to build it. And I want to be generous. With that money, you can leave this vicinity and settle somewhere else. Yes, but but we still own land here. Land you own isn't worth much. I'll give you 500 for the land. Gosh, I... I don't know what to say. What do you think of it, Sheriff? Yeah, Dad read it. I don't know what to say either. It seems to me you should be able to keep what you've got, including the coal that you found in the ground. Why, why don't you get yourselves a lawyer to find out about things? Of course, they're at liberty to do that if they choose. But my offer isn't going to stand indefinitely. Lawyers cost plenty of money, too. It's up to you, Martin. If you want to fight this through the courts, why... I don't why... want to fight it. I... Oh, doggone it, I don't know what to do. You've had my proposition. I have a document all drawn up, a bill of sale, and I have the cash. What, what, what is? Don't shoot! Shut the man. That's the fellow. Now, hold on there. Get out of the way, Sheriff. Don't interfere with us. I'll see here. That goes for you, you too. Why, you... I'll show you. Be quiet. Oh. Oh, if anyone wants gunplay, I'm ready. Ah, uh, you see here. Come to the door, Tonner. Well, can you watch him? Sheriff, all I want is a chance to talk to this man. Mr. Jackson? Yes. I put my guns away. They'll be handy if anyone tries to draw. See here. Who are you? What do you want? That belt. Uh, no, no, wait. Stand still. I'll help myself. But wait, wait. This belt. Where did you get it? I've had it for years. That's a lie. The belt belongs to a young friend of mine. Where is he? I don't know what you're talking about. Where is he? I don't know, I tell you. I don't know anything about a friend of yours. I I did stretch the truth. I bought that belt from a from a redskin over in Marshall City. <coughs> I got you, mister. Don't make a move. Steady, Sheriff. Steady's right. I'm holding a gun on you now, and I'm placing you under arrest until I find out who you are. You got the drop on me, Sheriff, because I was looking at something that's been written on the inside of this belt. I'm going to investigate it right now. You're not going anywhere. I'm leaving, Sheriff. Tighten your trigger finger and I'll draw. Hey, wait. Come back here. He's getting away. Don't let him go. No tighter, Sheriff. But listen, wait a minute. I'll be back. Right out. Fool, you blockhead. Why didn't you shoot? You let him get away. Uh, God, it... After all, you can't shoot a man for taking a belt. Come on, The 
the Lone Ranger's sharp eyes had seen small symbols written on the inside of Dan Reed's belt. Without stopping to explain to Tonto, he set out at a fast pace with the Indian following leading Victor. They maintained this pace toward the setting sun until they reached a place where a little used trail angled in from the south. Oh, 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 now look here. He's drawn a couple of lines to indicate the trail. An arrow points to this branching road. Ah, me savvy. Down here, he has a compass direction. Due south to a dead pine tree. We'll go there. Uh, there are other directions. First, we'll find the dead pine tree. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. Well, here's the pine tree. The compass bearing says south, southwest. How far? Falling water. That means a waterfall. Uh, One filly! Steady, easy, big fella. Oh, fella. Oh, it's plenty good thing. Dan give instructions. We could never find tracks on ground like this. Uh, what next direction on belt? Steady there, Silver. Steady, boy. Easy. Due west. Then we go that way. Straight into the setting sun. One Silver! Come <laughs> it is no use struggling, Dan. Those ropes are tied so you're not going to get loose. I found that out. <laughs> you might just as well take it easy until the boss comes back. Well, then what are you going to do with us? Well, that's up to Mr. Rudd. He won't dare let us go. Well, if I was in his boots, I know darn well I wouldn't turn you free to make trouble. On the other hand, Rudd's no killer. What's more, he's plenty smart. Maybe he's smart enough to know us some way so you can't make trouble for him. I doubt that. He'll be in trouble no matter what he does. I... What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing's the matter. Everything's all right. Huh? Dan, why are you saying that? <laughs> You'll see. What do you know? Why are you talking that way? For a kid that's tied hand and foot, you got a mighty smart look on your face. Maybe I have. Maybe I've got reason for it. Yeah? I tried to tell your pal Calhoun that uh, he should take this belt instead of my fancy one. I was telling him the truth for his own good. What's it? He took my belt and there were some directions on it. Directions? That's right. What the... Mash. Why, you... Oh, you got him. I don't think you'll feel like any more fighting. My, my shoulder... My shoulder smashed. The gunplay was on your idea. Uh, we saw your belt, Dan. That's the reason we're here. Steady, just a minute. Dan, who is this masked man? Who's the Indian? A man by the name of Rudd planned this. He did? Yeah, the masked man's a friend of mine. Then they must be all right. All right? You bet they're all right. My name's Jackson. Al Jackson from Marshall City. I was on my way to go for Bend. We're going there as soon as possible. Now to give Dan the knife so he can cut Jackson's rope. Ah, here, Dan. Thanks. I'll have you free in just a second, Mr. Jackson. Do something for that man's wound, Toto. Ah, let me fix him. Tie him up and leave him here. How are we going to get oh, to go for sh- Bent? We saw one horse outside. It's Blackie's. You can use that one. Right. Victor's waiting for you, Dan. Victor? Oh, golly, that's great. Mr. Jackson, you can see why I felt pretty confident a few minutes ago. I saw Tonto at the window, and I knew he'd be out of here in no time. The sooner the better. I'm sure looking forward to telling John Rudd a few things. We'll go on ahead, Toto. You can follow when you finish dressing that wound and tying Blackie. Uh, me follow. There's Victor. Hello there, Victor. Gosh, it sure is good to see you. There's a horse for you, Jackson. All right. Can you make the saddle all right? Yeah, I'll Good. Boy. Follow me, then. One, two, three. Come on, Victor. Yeah. After the surprising visit of the masked man, the meeting in the sheriff's office broke up. It was several hours later when John Rudd, accompanied by Slim Calhoun, went to the small home of Ben and Kate Martin. I thought I'd give you one more chance to leave here peacefully and take some cash along with you. I suppose it's the best thing for us, Kate. We've got no money to fight a man like Mr. Rudd. You couldn't beat this case in court. 
You'd be foolish to try. I still don't understand how the survey could have been wrong all these years. You don't have to understand that, Martin. All you've got to understand is this here paper. Now, this tells you that your house is on land belonging to John Rudd. And you've got to get off. Now, here's a bill of sale all ready for your signature. When you and Kate sign that, you get the cash. Where shall I sign? Right here. Ben, I hear someone stopping. Well, see who it is. Oh, here, sign right Just here. Just a second, Mr. Rudd. What? The mask man again. Now, see here. Now, take it easy. I'll do the job. The sheriff. I've learned a few things since the last time we were together. Get your hands up, Calhoun. My name is Jackson. Did you hear that, Jackson? He's a double-twisted liar. You? Where did you come from? In the cabin where you left me. You too, Rudd. Get him up. You're under arrest. Sheriff, I don't savvy. him. That man that posed as Jackson... Is an imposter. His real name is Slim Calhoun. This is Al Jackson. That's Reed. not true. That's it's a... It's true enough, Rudd. He had some credentials you didn't find. He established his identity, and so did that masked man. I know what I'm talking about. That report about the land belonging to Rudd is a lie. A lie? You mean... I mean, I... you own this land and all that's on it, including the coal. Oh, Ben. That masked man will back what I say. He knows the true facts. He just went out. He stepped out the door a second ago. Who is he? Why'd he take the belt off that man? The belt is what brought him to the rescue, Mrs. Martin. As to who he is, the best I can tell you is that he's the Lone Ranger. I am The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.